A small uranium pellet the size of a coin can generate enough energy to power an entire neighborhood for a year. But how is electricity generated in a nuclear power plant? In this video, we'll discover how a nuclear plant works to produce electrical energy. This marvel of engineering generates enormous amounts of power that drive our cities, factories, and homes. But it wasn't until 1938 that scientists Lise Meitner and Otto Hahn achieved a decisive breakthrough, the discovery of nuclear fission. A process in which the nucleus of a uranium atom splits into two smaller parts, releasing a tremendous amount of energy. This finding revealed that the atom's nucleus holds a power capable of transforming the world's energy production. Nuclear plants use small uranium-235 pellets as fuel, an extremely powerful material. A single pellet the size of a coin can generate as much energy as 88 tons of coal, a clear example of the incredible power locked inside the atom's core. These pellets are carefully placed inside long metal tubes about 50 centimeters in length, made from a special zirconium alloy. This is no ordinary metal. It's designed to withstand extreme temperatures, endure intense pressures, and resist corrosion even in the harshest environments. Once sealed, the tubes are grouped into perfectly organized bundles called fuel rods, which are assembled inside the reactor to form its core, the true heart of the nuclear power plant. Each of these rods can generate up to 1 million kilowatt hours of electricity, enough to power thousands of homes for weeks. Bruce Power Nuclear Generating Station is one of the largest in the world. Located on the shores of Lake Huron in Canada, this massive facility covers more than 9 square kilometers, an area equivalent to over a thousand football fields. Inside, eight powerful candidate-type reactors operate, a Canadian design renowned for its efficiency and reliability. Each reactor can produce more than 750 megawatts of electricity, enough to supply millions of people. In total, the plant produces nearly 6,400 megawatts, about 30% of all the electricity consumed in Ontario. The uranium fuel is securely protected behind 2 meters of reinforced concrete, a solid barrier designed to withstand any contingency. And just in case, an intimidating no-entry sign makes it clear this is no place for the curious. At this stage, the fuel emits radiation levels so low they're barely detectable, allowing operators to handle them safely to bring them to life. The uranium fuel rods must be positioned with millimeter precision inside the reactor core, an imposing metal structure filled with perfectly aligned holes. For safety, anyone approaching the core must wear a bulky protective suit designed to block radiation. And even then, the reactor must be completely shut down, because if the core were active, no suit could protect you. The radiation would be so intense that within seconds it could release invisible heat capable of completely frying anyone nearby. Once the core has been inspected, cleaned, and rebuilt with surgical precision, it's time for the most anticipated moment, loading it with nuclear fuel, one of the most energy-dense substances on Earth. Each of the 480 reactor tubes can hold up to 12 fuel rods, for a total of 5,760 rods. Once all are in place, perfectly aligned like pieces of a giant, silent mechanism, the Rayall show begins. Inside the fuel rods, an astonishing phenomenon occurs. Some uranium atoms are especially unstable, always on the verge of a microscopic explosion. When they're disturbed, for example, by being struck by a particle, they enter an excited state and begin releasing neutrons at high speed, shooting them out like tiny subatomic bullets in all directions. These tiny, fast, invisible neutrons easily pass through the zirconium walls of the fuel rods, traveling from one tube to another like messengers of energy until they strike another uranium atom. At that moment, something extraordinary happens, nuclear fission. The atom splits into two smaller fragments, releasing enormous amounts of heat energy, along with several more neutrons that trigger additional splits. These new neutrons shoot out, hit more atoms, which then split and release even more energy. This sets off a chain reaction, a cascade of atomic divisions that generates colossal amounts of power, enough to supply entire cities. 
But when it comes to a chain reaction, the most important thing is not just starting it, it's knowing how to control it. Because if the reaction runs out of control, it could lead to one of the most feared scenarios in nuclear history, a reactor core meltdown. This happens when the heat from atomic fission exceeds safety limits, melting the reactor's internal components. The result could be devastating, a radioactive leak capable of contaminating the environment, gravely affecting human health, and forcing the evacuation of entire areas for decades. To prevent this, nuclear plants are equipped with a system as simple as it is ingenious, control rods. Made from special materials like boron or cadmium, they can absorb the neutrons that sustain the chain reaction. When inserted into the core, they slow or even stop the reaction, regulating heat levels with remarkable precision. Without them, the reactor would be like a runaway train with no brakes. The reactor core is designed like a true fortress, not only sealed inside over 2 meters of reinforced concrete but also equipped to automatically shut down if the temperature rises or the pressure drops too quickly. While it's not powerful enough to blow off the plant's roof, it can easily generate massive amounts of heat. This heat is used to warm water in a closed circuit, water not meant for drinking or industrial use, but solely to transport heat from the core to the turbines. The entire process is monitored in real time from the control room, a space filled with screens, buttons, and sensors where highly trained technicians supervise every parameter, temperature, pressure, flow, and stability. The water is kept under extremely high pressure to prevent it from boiling inside the core, so intense that it doesn't boil even at nearly 300 degrees Celsius. It then transfers its heat to another circuit where the water turns to steam. Meanwhile, deep in the core, a visually stunning and eerie phenomenon occurs. The fuel emits a blue glow known as the Cherenkov effect, which happens when charged particles travel faster than light in that medium. Once the water in the second circuit becomes high-pressure steam, the most spectacular part of the system comes into action, the turbines. These giant structures sit in a hall 400 meters long and 20 stories high. The dense, fast-moving steam strikes the turbine blades with great force, spinning them at an incredible 1,800 revolutions per minute. As they turn, the turbines convert thermal energy into mechanical energy, and finally into electricity. This rotational motion drives a massive electric generator that produces over 750 megawatts of electricity, enough to meet the needs of half a million people. Once the steam has done its job turning the giant turbines, it's not wasted. It's cooled in a condenser using cold water from rivers, lakes, or the plant's iconic cooling towers. The steam condenses back into liquid water, ready to start the cycle again and again. But all this comes with a challenge, radioactive nuclear waste. After about a year in the core, uranium fuel rods are spent, but not completely. Even though they can no longer sustain the reaction, they remain extremely hot and dangerously radioactive. Their temperature and radiation levels are so high they can't be handled or stored directly. That's why these spent rods are submerged in massive cooling pools filled with crystal clear water. This water not only absorbs residual heat but also acts as a radiation shield. They must remain submerged for at least 10 years until their temperature and radiation drop to safe levels. At the bottom of these pools, more than 8 meters deep, rest over 500,000 used fuel rods. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and share it with someone who might find it interesting. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications to keep learning.